In Podcast FDR 1019, which was previously Premium Podcast number 79, entitled We Are Full of Treasure, Molyneux asked several of his closest followers how many times they meet people outside of FDR worth talking to. Like a good attorney, he asks the question because he already knows what they're going to say. One by one, each of them declare that they never meet anyone outside of FDR worth talking to. However you have heard Defu defined in the past, the empirical evidence demonstrates that Molyneux's followers abandon everyone. The majority of Defuers, including Molyneux and his wife, leave all family, extended family members, and most or all of their friends. In a number of personal counseling sessions with his followers, Molyneux proves to the follower that the parent he or she feels close to is actually worse than the parent he or she disdains. Therefore, both must be abandoned. Soon, siblings who refuse to get on board are deemed corrupt, followed by friends, etc. And for those who are concerned that FDR may be a destructive cult, at least as far as those closest followers are concerned, it sends up a red flag because a defining characteristic of all destructive cults is isolating the new member from outside influences. I'm not saying that that's what's happening here. I'm simply making the case that the term defu is probably inept, since it is not limited to family. Molyneux's closest followers typically abandon everyone. So how is that possible if defooing is a response to abuse, as is commonly claimed? That brings us to point number two. Defu isn't about abuse. It's about thought crimes. A significant amount of materials at FDR, including the But My Parents Were Really Nice podcasts and books such as On Truth and Real-Time Relationships, are devoted to convincing you that your parents are corrupt, to use Molyneux's term. It's important to pay attention to that term. Someone who is corrupt is simply someone who doesn't share Molyneux's worldview. It's your first hint that defooing really doesn't have anything to do with actual abuse. Hi. Yes? Hello, how you doing? Good. Uh, I have a question that uh, I'm anxious about. It's not really well elaborated, but uh, I'm just going to have a go with it. Um, it's uh, after after coming to FDR, um, I've noticed that I just lost a lot of uh, interest in a lot of things. Uh, it's, it was like it's been like a slow, steady collapse, kind of, of uh, just activity. Um, and also, um, I have a friend who uh, was into programming. Um, and he was, uh, he, he got to FDR, and he w- was also into it until, like, he, I don't know, he got into FDR, and it kind of started waning, like, his interest in it. Um, and I'm not sure if he just stopped after he did food or something, but at this point, he just completely stopped uh, programming now. Like, he realized that it's, it's not the thing for him. And uh, I defu recently, so I'm I'm wondering, I'm wondering how, how and why this happens. Like losing interest in things that used to be used to be fun and uh, uh, yeah. So the story goes: when I was a very young Colleen, nineteen. I believe, wow, 19 years and years and years ago, uh, I started to become involved in the Free Domain radio community. I began listening to the podcasts and watching the videos, participating on the discussion boards. So (laughs) I lost a significant portion of my life to this group. I lost thousands of dollars. I lost um, two or three years, which are supposed to be very, you know, fun, carefree, formative years of my life. I abandoned a career path. I was a third year aerospace engineering student. I completely abandoned that path um, due to my involvement in the group. I um, lost time with my family and my friends. Defooing is an act targeted to a specific age group. This is slippery, but very important. 
FDR was created to catch young people at the point of individuation, or, as Molyneux says it, he needed to reach the kiddies. But it was through the suggestions of my wife that I really began to feel that I had something new and unique to offer. And believe it or not, this is all related to this initial question of uh, children and parental obligations and, and fundamentally the great challenge of how to reach the kiddies, how to reach the children, and the challenges of all of this. Current FDR members remain unembarrassed that Molyneux thinks of them as the kiddies. But Molyneux was specifically targeted a group of people in their late teens and early 20s, the age group that universally struggles in their quest to become independent adults, and intentionally glorifies defoeing, an act you will not find duplicated anywhere except, once again unfortunately, in destructive cults. Uh, just you, sorry, you, you said that you had defeated recently. Are you um, are you talking to a therapist? Uh, have you been talking to a therapist through this process? Yes. Okay, good. Just just always double checking because I think that's absolutely essential. Um, do, you, do would you like to give me an example of something that you formerly found uh, fun that you don't uh, find as much fun anymore, or do you want me to just give you some general <laughs> generalized thoughts on it? I, I mean, I'm happy to be more specific if you like. Okay. Um... Well, I don't know. I I don't do anything anymore. I I I think the only thing that I retain is uh, maybe art, like drawing every now and then, and kind of going on boards and, and reading stuff on the internet. But uh, that's not all I do right now. Uh, right. Okay. And sorry, yeah. just can you can you think of something sort of more? Was it a hobby or social relationships that you had? Uh, that were more interesting to you in the past than they are now. Oh yeah, um, I had I had friends, and they were, I mean, they weren't that close, but they were kind of close. Uh, so I guess friends who like like a group of friends. Um, I I left all of them because like I didn't find it satisfying anymore. Hmm. Uh, and now I just have this one friend, and I mean it's it's great. Uh, it's just uh, it's like. Now it's like uh, I'm not willing to invest a lot of time with somebody unless I know I'm going to get something really, really uh, valuable from it. Um, so in terms of social relationships, that's how it is. And I also kind of, uh, do you want me to talk more about activities? Uh, it's completely up to you. I'm, I'm happy to, to listen and provide feedback on, on whatever you want to bring up. Okay, yeah, I, I want to talk more about activities, actually. Um, I want to figure out, uh, I want to figure out my, why my friend lost his interest in programming. And, I mean, I've, I've kind of talked to some people uh, who've also kind of lost interest in stuff like uh, their, like maybe if they were into art and drawing and stuff, they don't do that so much anymore or, um, or you know, or music or something. Uh, I, I want to, I wonder also if if I'm gonna get that with my own hobbies like I draw and I haven't uh, uh, I haven't gotten a lot of enjoyment out of really anything uh, like I used to. Right, so, and would you say sorry to interrupt, but would you say that? And I, I'm going to be um, <clears throat> annoyingly redirecting here, and I hope that you will consider that to be fair. Um, I, okay. I would, and I, I, you tell me if this is wrong. I just is the way that I would like to talk about it. But but I, I'm certainly happy to to change it if if you feel it's not accurate. Um, I mean, I hope that people don't think that they're into free domain radio as as a set of conclusions. I mean, I hope that people uh, get into philosophy, i.e., into you know reasoning from evidence and first principles. Uh, and I hope that they you know, and you, of course. I mean, I hope that people get into philosophy. Uh, not into free domain radio, if that makes any sense. That's sort of like getting into Richard Dawkins rather than biology or science, which is sort of not, certainly not my aim. And, and if I'm not achieving that aim, I want to be sort of clear that it is my aim. And I'm certainly happy to hear uh, if there are better ways to do it. But I would like to sort of talk about um, if, if it's getting into philosophy that has caused these problems, or if there is something more specific to free domain radio, I'm certainly happy to hear that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say it's more philosophy in general. 
Right. I mean, yeah. and I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to sort of yank myself off the hook or anything, but um, that's sort of why I, I sort of focus so much on, on, uh, on how to think, and I, you know, try to avoid inflicting conclusions uh, and so on, right? Because it is really important to get into philosophy, and not, you know, into me or what I'm saying or what I'm doing or anything like that, because I'm pretty inconsequential in the whole scheme of things. So, so if right. the question is, why is philosophy making me less happy? You know, and I, I certainly sympathize, I certainly understand, and I, I really do empathize with that, and I, I don't think it's unusual at all uh, to, to go through right. this phase, but would that be a fair way of putting it? No, I, I mean, uh, I get the idea of that, but I would say it's more philosophy is making me see, like, uh, making me less happy uh, and doing things that I used to, that used to make me happy. Right. Um. There have been some complaints or requests that uh, people are feeling a little bit uh, at sixes and sevens in the conversation. They're also feeling a little bit like not sure. Well, this is related. Not sure what to do next. Uh, not sure what's uh, uh, what's going to to keep people motivated after they've expelled the poisons of corrupt relationships and family members and so on. So I'm going to talk about what's next and then you're going to dislike me <laughs> i'm sure that's going to be the case Let me tell you the reality of this conversation, right, in terms of your life, right? If you're only listening to the podcasts, you're not in the conversation. You're not even close to being in the conversation. You could only be further from the conversation if you weren't speaking English or didn't. And look, I'm just trying to help you understand that, like, I'm trying to take away the cake that you've eaten so that you don't think you have, you can have your cake and eat it too. If you think you're a philosopher by reading Mises, listening to the podcasts, calling in on the Sunday show, if you, and I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but if you think that you're a philosopher because you listen to podcasts, you don't understand. You, then you think you're a doctor because you read medical books. The purpose of a doctor is not to read medical books. The purpose of a doctor is to heal the sick. If you just sit at home and read Grey's Anatomy and you think that you're a doctor, I'm going to tell you you're not. And you're worse in a way than somebody who doesn't read these books because you have the knowledge and you won't share it because you're afraid and because you're angry. Because you're afraid of people and you're angry at the world for its rejection of you. And I understand that. I really do understand that. It's a, it's a hard thing to love the world and it's a hard thing to love what the world can be and to help get it there. It's a hard thing to love the sick who spit on you for treating them. I understand that. I really do. You don't have to do any of it. But just, then just don't imagine that you're in the conversation. Right? Don't imagine that you're doing anything other than taking up my bandwidth. Don't, don't, that's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to do anything. But just don't imagine that you're in the conversation or get it at all. If buying a t-shirt or a book or sending me some emails is so utterly beyond your capacities. What is next is getting out into the world. What is next is spreading the health that you have earned through this conversation, through your application of this conversation. Once you have cured yourself, the next step is to cure the world. So, let me tell you what it's like to be on the receiving end of this kind of staggering indifference and laziness on the part of, of this conversation and being on the receiving end of this kind of, hey, 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 give us some t-shirts, love to wear some t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, baseball caps, love them. 
And it's been up now for, I think, five days. Had a grand total, three orders. <laughs> three orders. Three orders. 20,000 listeners, 30, I mean, not all at this level, but a couple of thousand at this level. Three orders. Because that for a group of people working from first principles in the grandest reaches of human thought, to be stopped by a logo is funny. It's not the right color. <laughs> oh, my God, people, you're killing me. Ah, I'd love to help the planet, ah, but it's the font I can't take. Ah, ah, I'd love to save the world, but this color doesn't make my eyes pop for the ladies. <laughs> oh, oh, man. And you're just telling me that you're scared, and I understand that. But let's be honest about that. Don't insult me. So you just got to get off your ass and get out into the world. And that's the next thing. And that's the next thing. It can't just be me. It can't just be me. I'm going to die. 